what effect does breathing have on recovery? There's this thing called EPOC, which is exercise post oxygen consumption. And in the exercise science community, this is how they measure how heavy duty a workout was, by how much oxygen you need to actually consume after you've worked out in order to get back to normal. That tells me that breathing is very important to recovery. So if I'm a shallow breather, right, and I'm just showing you what, what most people breathe like, and I, and I was one of these people where I didn't understand how to actually access my diaphragm and breathe from my gut where I'm taking in a lot of air and letting that air out and then taking in a lot of air and then letting out and what's happening and if I'm doing that enough I don't need to hyperventilate all the time although we've seen a lot of that stuff going on <laughs> although I've seen the, the, the clock just went off so I, I, we've seen a lot of the hyperventilating techniques which help and work but there are other techniques too which involve just deep breathing and actually down-regulating yourself. So something like an apnea protocol where I'm using a one for the inhale, I'm using a four for a breath hold, and I'm using a two for an exhale. So if I were to inhale for one second, I would hold for four seconds, and then I would exhale for two and I would repeat that process. Now, that's gonna be pretty easy for most people. So, take that up a few notches. Let's say I inhale for five seconds, which was more like four, but if I inhaled for five seconds, I would then hold my breath for 20 seconds, and then I would literally exhale for 10 seconds. So, the five is the one, so I'm going four times the five, right? And then I'm exhaling double the five, which is 10 seconds. And that plays a massive, massive role in understanding down-regulation. And at first it becomes kind of stressful because it's where our bodies aren't used to having to regulate CO2 like that. So it feels like it gets stressful. But after you get about five or 10 rounds into this, if, you've, you, if you're using the right numbers, which you can use, you, you should figure that out in the first few because if it gets stressful as you're doing this, the stress, we don't need more stress, we need less stress. So we want to make it so it's something that I actually can see my heart rate dropping down or getting lower and my oxygen saturation levels getting back up. Okay, so figuring out that number becomes important. Just do a couple rounds, you'll understand really quickly if that doesn't work and then adjust from there, either up or down. I'm somebody who does about a 10 second inhale, a 40 second breath hold and a 20 second exhale. So I'm spending basically a minute on one breath and I'm controlling that to down regulation. Granite that started at like a four second inhale with like, you know, that 16 second breath hold and then a eight second exhale. So it makes, you can make tremendous jumps and this isn't even really trying. This is just using it for some down regulation. So the breathing portion becomes very important in the fact that I'm actually getting air in. So if I'm a shallow breather, I'm not getting a whole lot of air in. I'm not getting oxygen in. I'm just dumping more CO2, okay? So I'm accumulating that CO2, and although I, f I might feel okay, and I can recover in six or eight hours, and this is just a hypothetical number, if I'm actually taking in more oxygen and getting more air in the system, <sighs> and controlling the breathing and spending some time breathing, I'm actually recovering my body quicker because the body actually looks at oxygen as its most important thing. What does life require, right? Requires oxygen, requires light, requires water, and requires food. 
Okay, so we've got these things going on. How long can you last without air? How long can you last without water? How long can you last without food? There's your prioritization of everything you want to do in terms of recovery, right? So how little I how how little I can go with the air component compared to the food and water component is big. So understanding that if I actually am bringing in more air or going through some sort of breathing protocol to downregulate, allow oxygen to get into the system and relax more, I can recover quicker. Also, understanding breathing mechanics. And one of the quickest ways we can do that is just teaching ourselves how to access the diaphragm a little easier. It's, it's difficult for most of us because we're in this seated position a lot. And then when we stand up, we end up doing things which are actually, I'm overextending right now, I'm in a very unstable position because I'm looking for stability here versus being stable and in position and if I sit correctly where I'm posturally aligned, I can actually access the diaphragm. But the quickest and easy way to learn that is if I put my thumbs right into the small of my back. You'll feel the tissue, so if you feel, if you can touch your spine, good. Go out to the little bumps, the sausages on the side, that, the multifidi, right? So then I'm going to move out just into the small of back. It almost feels like there's empty space, okay? And then I'm going to wrap my hands around. I'm just gonna wrap them around to where I can. And I'm going to squeeze and dump all my air. And now I've got my hands on my gut. I want to breathe by doing this. <sighs> Driving my hands out. <sighs> you start to feel what it's like to actually breathe correctly and use your breathing muscle, that diaphragm. So we're actually accessing the ability to get more air. The difference is if we were to take a balloon and just use our little short breathing range and blow a balloon up on one breath of air versus if I dump the air in I can almost double the air that I'm blowing in, which if I'm doubling the air that's coming out, that means I'm doubling the air that's coming in, which means I'm getting more oxygen in, into the bloodstream, which is allowing the body to recover a lot quicker.